The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to Brainwood Webinar on China, the rapid evolution of China regulations. The regulation change proceed at breakneck pace, so it is important to stay on top of the regulations. My name is Rachel and I am a regulatory consultant at Brainwood Biomedical. First, I would like to introduce by providing a bit of, a bit of background about what we do. We are a regulatory consulting firm based in Sydney. We have office in Australia, New Zealand and China, but we also manage global regulatory submissions with particular expertise in Asia Pacific. Our services include regulatory strategies, pre-market submissions, as well as post-market compliance. So um, this is the screen that you should be viewing. And if you have any questions during the webinar, please leave, it, leave a, um, questions during the webinar. Please type your question in this red box and we will answer at the end of the webinar. And if your questions don't get answered, we will reply through emails after. Um, just a little tips about um, about um, um, the webinar and just for your optimize um, your viewing, please close all your other browsers. Okay, let's make a start. Um, so what happened in China? I will first provide a history and background of CFDA and how does CFDA work by, by providing an overview of China infrastructure and an overview of regulation reform and the key changes in, in China in the past 12 to 18 months and talk about what's next. History and background of CFDA. The agency was found in 1998 and it's called State Drug Administrations, which only has control over drugs and medical devices. In 2003, the agency has given certain authorities over food and was renamed to State Food and Drug Administrations, reporting directly to State Council. In 2008, the agency had been downgraded with less authorities after a series of corruption scandal. The head of SFDA has been reported for taking bribes in return for approving food and med medicines. For examples, in 2008, CFDA has been approved melamine tinted infant milk. Three years after the products has been in the market, six children died and over 300,000 babies suffered from kidney failure. In 2012, CFDA has approved antibiotics made by recycled cooking oil. Further scandal has been continued. Threaten both Chinese consumers and international consumers to use Chinese product. And in March 2013, the National People Congress has moved in and consolidated the agency and elevating it back to the ministerial level. And um, the agency will directly uh, report to the State Council. And this is when SFDA, State Food Drug Administrations, become CFDA, China Food and Drug Administrations. So how does CFDA work? This is an overview of China infrastructure. They have the law and they have the regulations on medical devices, supervisions and administrations, which is a top tier regulation governing entire medical devices life and they have the provisions on registrations, QMS, clinical trial and post-market and those were formulated in accordance to the top tier regulations. Then, then, um, then they have the technical standards. This is an overview of regulation reform in China. The registration requirements and process have been changed dramatically from basic voluntary registration in 1996 and product registration has been required since 1997. In year 2000, China has published the first tier, top tier regulations of medical devices. And between year 2000 and year 
2011, a bunch of provisions has been published. In 2013, China has joined the International Medical Devices Regulator Forum, the IMDRF. The medical devices regulatory framework in China is fast moving towards international harmonizations. And most importantly, in 2014, China has published the second revision of the top tier regulations of medical devices supervisions and administrations in 2014 and um, establish Chinese national uh, industrial standards and streamline the process in order to standardize the device market. Okay, so China now has a complete set of regulations from pre-market to post-market. The main purpose of this change is to increase control over the high-risk devices and relief from low-risk devices from over-control which loosen up the requirement for low-risk devices. Okay, and um, a lot has been changed and we will talk about it in detail. So, um, classification rules are one of the key elements that has been changed in the, in the, in the past 12 to 14, uh, 18 months. Classification is the first step and most important steps when registered products in China. Often, China cherry picks the guidance from other countries that they think it will work and add a bit of its own guidance and become China's regulations. Similar here for Chinese classification systems, they use a combination of US catalog based systems and the European rule based systems and in China market experience to determine the classifications for a device. Medical devices classifications. So China has the classification rule, classification catalog, and case-by-case -case consultations. The case-by-case -case consultations, which is the classification request submissions, uh, you submit the submissions to CFDA, and CFDA will issue a formal letter um, of the classification for the device. China has used a, a similar approach as the GHTF members, but interestingly, the differences, the um, classification rule are intended to be used for the purpose of CADA to create the classification catalog. The classification rule provide an insight approach to CFDA but you need to consult with classification catalog to confirm where you stand. Um, the classification, the new provision of the classification rule was published in July um, this year, which is about a month ago, and effectively from the 1st of January 2016. Just a note, the full translation of the classification rule is available on our Brainwood Biomedical website. And here's the link. You um, um, can go in and have a look at the full translations. In this new provisions, you talk about the general rule to determine classifications and clarify stand alone software, active implantable device, and define classification of kits and modify classification principle for accessories. This is the general rule for classification rule. Increased level of risk will increase the classification. Um, this is the medical device classification table extracted directly from the um, classification provision. To, um, the level of the risk of the device can be determined by medical devices intended purpose and also taking into consideration with the factors such as the service patent, whether the device is a non-active medical devices or uh, active devices, and whether the, the device is, um, has directly contact with the body, and also the duration of use. It can be categorized into transit, which is less than 24 hours, and short term, which is longer than 24 hours and less than 30 days. Long term, which is longer than 30 days. 
For medical devices, that's an active medical devices and directly contact with body, it can be categorized into mild damage, moderated damage and severe damage as per extent of impact, uh, as, as per extent of possible damage caused by losing control. And um, here is the non-active medical devices and active medical devices and um, indirectly contact with body. It can be categorized into mostly without impact, mild impact and significant impact as per extent of impact towards treatment outcome. And in the classification um, rules, um, the new provisions, you also have the special classification rules um, for sterile products and measuring function devices, they are class 2 or above. And for accessory to medical devices, um, it's defined as to assess the impact on safety and effectiveness of supporting medical devices. And also, if this accessory has monitor or affect the main function of other medical devices, the classification cannot be lower than the main medical devices. For combination products, which is a combination of medical devices and medicines, if the mode of action is medical devices, the classification should be class 3. Observable devices is a class 3 devices in China, and orthopedic devices is class 2 or above. For surgical dressing, that treats um, deep wound um, and contact with injury to deep dermis or below or chronic wound, uh, or it can be entirely or partially absorbable, then you will consider as class 3 in China. For procedure packs and systems, the classification is the highest class of the component within the kit. And um, then um, the next is the user fees. We all know this is coming as CFDA have been um, talking about it for a while, but the user fee was published and effectively on the same date, which is on 27th of May 2015. And um, I've converted um, into Euro as well for your um, convenience. Um, we can see for the imported um, registration fee are significantly higher than the domestic registration fee. And interestingly, for class two imported registration fee are, are higher than class three domestic registration fee. And there are some applications that are exempted from, from, from the um, CFDA user fee. For example, the class one filing registrations and the classification request submissions and also for small business for um, that, that has innovative devices are uh, exempted from, from um, CFDA user fee. And the Chinese STED has been changed from um, in the new regulations. So what is in the Chinese STED? Those are the list of the documents that um, that included in the Chinese STED. The documents that are highlighted in yellow are the additional documents um, from the new regulations. For the quality control testing report, uh, it is required um, in the in the new um, registration in the new regulations for class one filing registrations. Which, is not, which were not required in the previous regulations. So for classification structures, for class one catalog uh, devices are, um, are going through the class one filing registrations. Um, I just want to talk about uh, a little bit on the class one filing registrations. From the guidance, it appears as a, it is an administrative review rather than technical review. However, the technical documents are still required as part of the submissions. Uh, therefore, there's still, um, there's still some level of technical review. So um, the filing registration is not as easy as it sounds. 
for class 2 catalog and class 3 catalog are not published yet um, and it required to go through the registration pathway and there's the classification request applications. For pre-market, for class 1 it required a Chinese STD, class 2 and 3 there are additional requirements such as type testing and in China clinical trial and in particularly for class 3 devices um, it is required um, to submit a pre-approval before conducting clinical trial in China. So increased level of risk or increased level of control. This is an overview of China regulatory process for class 2 and 3 medical devices. And um, it will roughly take about 24 to 36 months, about 2 to 3 years time to prepare um, the submissions until um, approval from CFDA. And I just want to mention in particular in China type testing. Um, that um, each testing center has its own area of expertise and the timeline and extent of exemptions vary from each centers. And um, only for product pass type testing should be used for clinical trial. And um, at the moment, uh, we know some of the testing centers are experiencing a backlog of sample testing at the moment. So it is important to understand which testing center to use to avoid any unnecessarily time spent in the queue. And now I'm going to talk about local clinical trial. As the change of regulations in um, last year, the top tier regulations, that in China clinical trials are required for class 2 and 3 medical devices unless exempted. Ways to comply with China clinical requirements. First pathway is the clinical trial exempted list can use to demonstrate of device is within the scope of the product in the clinical trial exempted list and demonstrations and justification for equivalency of in China predicate and comparison table with relevant supporting documents. So here's the comparison table with device in the exempted list which is directly extracted from the, from the guidance. And here's the translation of the comparison table. And we can see the comparison item including basic mechanism, structures and compositions, manufacturers materials and performance requirements including tender purpose, sterilization method, scope and instruction for use. So the supporting documents need to provide evidence must demonstrate that device to be registered are uh, under the scope of product in, in China clinical trial exempted list for class 2 and 3. Okay, this is the list of exempted medical devices and the, the, the exempted lists are only for medical devices only. The um, IVD exempted lists are, are not yet uh, published by CFDA. Manufacturers of devices that are not included in this list may still be able to apply for the exemptions based on the, um, the data from predicate devices in China. Which is our second pathway to predicate in China? Um, the manufacturer needs to demonstrate the equivalency with the device in the registration and, um, and the in China predicate. Then generate a clinical evaluation report based on the in-China predicate. Here is the comparison table with in-China predicates and which is also directly extracted from the guidance, CFDA guidance. And um, here's the translations. We can see in this comparison table, the comparison items are a lot more and details comparing to the previous comparison table. Okay, so how do we know if clinical evaluation report or uh, is sufficient or it is the device is required to go through in China clinical trial? So after the comparison table, 
if there are any difference exists in the in China equivalent product, if there are any difference, um, does difference you go yes, and does difference impact safety and effectiveness of the product? There are supporting documents that can provide, such as non-clinical data, literature search, and clinical experience um, data. If those supporting documents can demonstrate there are no that the difference does not impact safety and effectiveness of the product, then, um, then um, you can prepare a clinical evaluation report, um, then submit with the applications. If there are any, if the, if the supporting documents um, cannot demonstrate or cannot demonstrate um, there are um, impact there are there are no difference on the impact to the safety or effect effectiveness to the devices then in China clinical trials are required and um, the risk of um, submit the the clinical evaluation report uh, with the submissions is that the decision of whether this clinical evaluation report will be sufficient to meet CFDA's clinical requirements only upon submission to CFDA. That, C, um, that CFDA may be accept uh, this clinical evaluation report are sufficient to meet clinical requirements in China, or CFDA might request for supplementary clinical trial in China, or the entire clinical trial, uh, trial in China as are, are required. The third pathway is in China clinical trial. It will require to have a clinical trial agreement with the clinical center and approval from the ethic committees and also the clinical trials um, need to follow in China GCP. This is the general requirements for in China clinical trial. That um, to conduct before the clinical trial can be conducted in China, it must pass through the type testing, and it must file with the provisional CFDA, and CFDA will conduct a quality audit, and free of charge the patient enroll um, into to clinical trials. And pre-approval for clinical trials. Um, uh, for class 3 devices are required and um, these are the list of the documents that are um, required to put through the pre-approval uh, applications. It will take about 90 working days which is roughly four months for technical review and the final approval for the pre-approval submission for class 3 devices before you can conduct clinical trial in China. Here are the key challenges. Um, it's the availability of the in China predicate clinical data to generate a clinical evaluation report and the availability of in China predicate. As China market is growing and in China clinical trials are required, um, the challenge of shortage of resources. And also um, CFDA has no formal access of consultations for pre-market submissions. However, um, most of the consultations are informal, so it is important to have someone who knows the agency and where to request information from before the before the, um, the before you generate the clinical evaluation report or conduct the clinical trial in China. Lastly, I want to talk about the expedited pathway. This is the um, CFDA issued a special review and approval procedure for innovative medical devices. To be eligible to go through this pathway, the, um, the, the manufacturer must hold a patent in China and the devices must be advanced technology and is new to China and the, the research data must be completed. So innovator devices fast track pathway. So once CFDA accept the device are eligible for the fast track pathway, you will get a single contact person to manage the whole review and advance feedback from the test center 
The classification catalog uh, category is, is decided in parallel with technical review and special review team appointed by Office of Innovative Device and Priority Processing. Um, in terms of the technical documents requirements and the reviewing process are the same but championed on the inside. It is a priority process, but given the upfront fast track application process will take up to five months, so the overall process may be not so fast. Here is the changes and impact from the new regulations. That um, in China clinical trials are required. For clinical trials, um, for class two devices will roughly takes about 14 to 15 months to complete. And for class three devices, it require pre-approval to, to CFDA before you can conduct clinical trial in China. So that will roughly take about four months. So it takes about um, 14 months, 15 months for class two devices for conducting clinical trial in China. And for class three devices, well, roughly takes about 19 months to complete um, the clinical trial in China. So, and and there are additional documents required for for Chinese STED. And the preparation time will roughly about two to three additional time to prepare the pre-market submissions. And CFDA user fee has been uh, published and effectively in May. So overall, there are more time and more cost to prepare the pre-market submissions in China. So we can see in the new regulations, it tightened up the requirement for the importer. Here is the CFDA approved registration of the imported medical devices in 2013 and 14. Now we can see in year 2014, the approved registrations are lower than the approved registration in 2013. This could be due to the new revisions of the top tier regulations that was published in, 2000, in 2014. And the new regulation has more requirements um, such as in China clinical trials and more documents required um, result in no longer preparation time before uh, the manufacturer can submit uh, the application to CFDA. And also, since May 2014, CFDA is only allowed single review questions. So if the response to the review questions are not sufficient to meet CFDA's requirements, um, CFDA will not accept the applications. It could mean a rejection to the applications. CFDA has published a GMP um, in this year, recently in July, and also there's a CFDA user fee. So um, the international audit um, has been effectively um, from starting from the 1st of September. So manufacturer intending to export to products to China should ensure they are compliant with China manufacturer requirements. So what's next? CFDA, um, uh, uh, as there are more documents required for pre-market submissions, so CFDA is going to recruit more technical reviewer, and those are founded by the user fee. Designations of device trial facilities. Um, currently, the agency has not published the device approved clinical trial center list which is currently the case for drug, where CFDA um, published a clinical trial approved center and any clinical trial um, conduct in those approved center, CFDA will accept those clinical data. Um, so uh, we will, um, so maybe the device approved center list will be published shortly. And reclassifications. CFDA is working on to downclassify some low risk products from over controlling and harmonize the regulations, which brings 
um, the regulations and the standard up to international level. Thank you for attending. Um, and uh, there are some photos um, in Beijing. Um, this is our CEO and the senior manager standing in our um, balcony in our Sydney, uh, in our sorry China office. And as mentioned at the start of the webinar, we uh, we have an office in Beijing, so um, to provide local regulatory support, including sponsorship. And um, I will give you a few minutes to type your question in. And um, if there are any questions that don't get to answer, and we will um, reply through emails after. Okay. Okay, I've got a question from Michelle. How long is the registration certificate valid for? Um, since the change of regulation last year, for class one filing registration, there is no expiry date for the registration certificate, as long as there is no change to the device and the information submitted for the registration are still current. But for class two and three registration certificate is valid for five years, as opposed to the four years um, in the in from from the previous regulations. And I receive another question um, from Leo. Will a copy of the recording be available? Um, yes, it will be available. <clears throat> after, sorry, after this webinar. And I received another question from Peter. Does CFDA offer consultation service prior submission to CFDA? Um, CFDA has consultation windows on Thursday morning, but however, it is more of the general advice on guidance or regulations. But if you want to find out specific registration pathway for your products uh, may not be possible. So it is important to know someone um, who knows the agency and who to ask to, um, to work out a strategy, registration strategy. And there's another question. Um, when will CFDA new user fee be paid? And will the user fee be refunded if the applicant um, to the applicant if the application is not being accepted by CFDA. CFDA's new user fee will be paid at the time of submission to CFDA. The user fee will not be refunded to the, to the, to the manufacturer or the, or the applicant um, if, if, the, if the application is not being accepted by CFDA. And there's another question, how do we know if the clinical evaluation report will be acceptable by CFDA? And as mentioned in the webinar, that the decision of whether CFDA accept the clinical evaluation report will only up on submission of the application to CFDA. So it is a risk for going down this pathway. And there's another question, um, how much details required to be included in the clinical evaluation report will consider uh, acceptable level, level by CFDA? Um, CFDA provide a template or, um, or of the clinical evaluation report in the guidance. It is required to include the literature search, clinical experience data such as the post-market data complaint, China population clinical data, etc. But um, I know the information um, that can be found out, um, are, are limited, so I would suggest to include as much deep data or information as possible in the report. 
and um, as the regulation is, is fairly new, has only um, enforced last year, and at this stage it is hard to provide what CRD will consider as an acceptable level. And, um, and I will say, I will say it, is, it is also depends on the product, the, the risk of the product. Okay, and there's another question. Will, um, will FDA approval or um, EC approval be helpful to register products in China? Um, China is like most of the Asian countries that require country of approval as the prerequisite to register product in China. However, in terms of the technical requirements and the reviewing process are the same for those products um, that has um, FDA approval or European approval. Um, is there a link to the clinical trial exempted list? Um, yes, the, it's, uh, it's available on CFDA public um, um, website. Um, I, um, but uh, but um, it is only uh, available in Chinese, to um, simplify Chinese. And uh, Maggie asks, is the user fee only for imported devices and not not the local manufacturer devices for class two devices? For um, domestic um, manufactured uh, for for class two devices are uh, depending on the provisional FDA. So the application will be reviewed by the provisional FDA instead instead of the um, CFDA. And uh, there's another question for Jing. It is a must to have a local clinical trial for class three devices in China. Um, it is required to have the clinical trial to, to be conducted in China if your devices is not in the exempted, the in China clinical trial exempted list. Um, or if you can find a uh, um, predicate in China, then um, you can go down the path of preparing a in China um, it pre to prepare a clinical evaluation report based on in China predicate. But again, there's a risk that CFDA um, the decision of whether CFDA will accept this um, form exempted clinical trial in China will only up on submission to CFDA. Okay, um, so if there are any questions that don't get answered, we will reply through emails. And, um, and thank you for attending this webinar.